We can ignore even pleasure, but pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. C.S. Lewis. Welcome to Glorious Professionals, brought to you by GoRuck Media. I'm Jason, here with Emily and Rich in the skiff, not the champagne room. While we're actively recording, it's now the skiff. We're here to talk about GoRuck Tribe and the 2021 theme, Seek Pain. So GoRuck Tribe just sort of came about as a, a way on the heels of 2020, where there was a lot of pain in the world's terms. And we said, hey, we need to double down on the community, bring people together, get people more active, in the real world, and we need to, to lead that from, from here and empower others to lead close to where they are in their communities. So the idea was basically a monthly challenge, some rocking to get outside, some encouragement to, to, to get people together in the real world, read a book, because this is warrior poet stuff, not just, you know, I like dragging my knuckles too, but I, you know, you, you got to use those same damn hands to read a book, you know, flip the pages and stuff while you're at it. So the theme seek pain though, it's not one that I, I think Rich, you, you kind of got it. Initially you were like pain with purpose and, and that's great. It's saying the same thing, at least intellectualizes the same thing. Right. Seek pain might be a little more aggressive. It is a bit, but it's, it, they reach the same goal. I mean, how would this, I mean, cause look, we're based on special forces roots. This, this kind of seek pain thing, the go ruck challenge 2010. I mean, randos showing up on a, on a parking lot next to the ocean. And like, they don't know what's going to happen. They just know that I got a whole bunch of bricks for them to shove inside their rucksack. They don't know when it's going to end nothing that, I mean, that's when go ruck became go ruck is when people chose to take the harder path. I'm going to show up. This is going to hurt. They didn't realize it but they were, they were searching for pain. They were seeking pain. They didn't know that. And it wasn't in those words, but that's what it was. They were looking to push themselves and make themselves better through a physical challenge that had been placed before them. And that's true of special forces, uh, the, the selection and assessment that we go through. It's a challenge. It's a physical challenge, but it can also be a mental challenge. And that's part of the whole wrap of being a tribe. The special forces community is a tribal community. It's people gathered together to support one another and to do things together. Now, in, in this case, where we've started tribe here, you may not be immediately adjacent to the people of your tribe, but you're still with the tribe in actions and activity. The tribe affords you the opportunity to act selflessly. And, and that is much needed in all of our lives. I mean, we, we understand this with kids, right? You have your kids, you, you will act selflessly. It just, it will be forced upon you. And also your heart doubles in size, so you want to act selflessly. But this is a, a facet that is missing from a lot of people's lives, is being really close and connected to others. And, you know, we can sit and, and debate the merits or the, the costs of technology until we're blue in the face. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's here to stay. And so the question becomes, how do we use this to the best of our abilities to strengthen our tribes? And so if, if you say, hey, the proper use of technology is as a tool, I will use it to organize and, and bring people closer together. And you actually do that because if all you are is online, you're just a forum. And so if you actually drive communities and empower them to the real world and say, this is where your tribe is, that, that's a huge win. And so this is all interwoven with the rut clubs that are out there, 400 rut clubs out there. And you know, how do people meet people? It's a really kind of scary concept. I know for a lot of people these days, there's so many people there's strangers everywhere. This is not how we evolved as human beings to just walk around and be surrounded by strangers all the time. And so sometimes you got to take, you got to join a tribe. You got to join a group. You got to join whatever the case may be. And that's where you meet other people. 
and then like-minded people, like-minded people. But look at what's happening. The, all the normal places where people usually meet, school, church, gyms, bars, bars, restaurants, you know, right now we've seen a time when those have been cut off in places and they weren't available. And so the only place to really, you know, get in touch with people was online and it was encouraged. I mean, gosh, the even the post office has seen a, a, a spike in their demand of, you know, people actually mailing letters, which is kind of quaint, right? But it's not the same. Having conversations with people online is a lot different than having it in person. Absolutely. And, you know, yes, I, I, I 100% agree. We, technology is here to stay and we need to use it for us, not having it, you, you know, the other way around. And uh, I've, I saw something interesting happen over the course of last year, and it continues to happen with the rut clubs. At first, it was, it was like, well, we're shutting down. And then they missed each other. So they, you know, within in accordance to their local, local restrictions or what was available to them, sometimes it meant meeting online, having a happy hour online, or doing a virtual rock where they went out separately and, um, you know, passed off virtually to someone else. That, that, or they were online together while they were rucking outside, you know? So there was some sort of connection while being physical. And then, you know, as things kind of evolved or changed, they got together and spaced out distances. And, you know, I was concerned that the number of rut clubs would decrease over this time. And in fact, we almost got a hundred more. Maybe the activity level changed, but the desire to connect more in society grew. It's it's a pretty normal thing for crises to kind of weigh on people to the point where they say, okay, I'm going to change something. And then the problem comes when we don't. And so you know, this has been an opportunity for us to, to remember what really, and be reminded and in some cases learn for the first time what really matters. And, you know, I've gotten, we've gotten to know our neighbors better. We've spent more time closer to home. We've gotten to know our kids better, mostly for better. Right? <laughs> but you prioritize your health, right? True. You know, in a, in a world uh, where work-life balance was always talked about but never heeded, I think there's been a, a, a time where people said, you know, I actually do need to make sure I don't get sick. You know, I do need to take care of myself. I do need to exercise. I do need to get enough sleep. I do need to eat healthy. And, you know, there's been lots of people – doing that, you know, and it's not a linear path. It's not like you're going to, you know, be a success story. I've lost weight or I've got so healthy and, you know, no, but it's a, it's a doable thing, something that you can maintain and, and continue to tweak. Richard, are you, do you exercise the same that you have your whole life or do you, have you changed things? You know, well, I've, I've, I've changed tremendously Yeah. Uh, again. And, and you pointed out very, very well, you need to use common sense in the things that you do. And that, that includes activities with the tribe. Everything we do in life requires common sense, and we need to think things through. Do we need to show caution now? Sure we do, because there's still the p pandemic going around. And so we need to ensure that, that we do things smart. Uh, GORUCK has been really lucky that we've run like 500 events, and we've had nothing happen, no, no passing of COVID. Uh, maybe we need to, to, to knock on wood. But if you're outside and you're distancing the way you should, you modify your behaviors using common sense to be able to still be together. Humans are gregarious. That's what we do. We gather, ergo tribe. And through that, we get our social interaction. And it's something we're used to. Both of you have pointed out, and it's a really good point, Technology is great, but it's a tool. It isn't the end result. It's a tool to use to assist us and others in contacting each other. You, you, you brought up a point about the post office. That, that, that It's kind of a point with me. Now, I'm an old guy, right? I like to write letters, and, and I text. Text is fine. 
when I want to just send something quickly and, and it really doesn't matter. But when I want to make sense of something, when I want somebody, somebody to understand that I really feel about something or that I really care about something, I write a letter. It's just what I do. I gain perspective for me, too, from that. And I like that. So the common sense part, that relates directly, I think, to the seek pain mentality which it makes sense to me. I, I'm not going to go put 45 pounds in my rucksack. You know, that's just oh. not in the cards for me, but Yet. I have known, <laughs> I Yet. have noticed. Just wait till you get another year at tribe under yeah. you. No, I, I, I think, <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, like, you know, after I had my last kid, I, I put 10 pounds in my water p- bottle in my rucksack and that was, that was good enough for me for a while. And, and yet over time, and especially the, you know, during this last year, I just said, you know, I'm ready for, I'm ready to level up. I'm ready for the 20 pounder. And, and I've found that I've gotten, you know, I've gotten stronger just through consistency, just by the driveway workouts. Uh, Jason started doing that with a bunch of guys and my rut club sort of evolved to over the weekend moms, we would get, uh, you know, come over and, and do a workout together. And then we, you know, sort of rock around the neighborhood. And sometimes we'd bring our kids with us. Sometimes we wouldn't, but it just, we managed to make it work. We managed to build it in and it's become, you know, sort of part of our lifestyle now. And one of the members is a, is a yoga teacher and she was doing all these online classes. And we, at first we started doing online classes. Then we were like, what are we doing? <laughs> we're, we're neighbors, like, let's just meet in our driveway, you know, in the evenings and space out and, you know, and, and thankfully that's, that's been an option for us. That's worked and it's been really great. We actually um, laughed at the first 30 minutes. We just chat. It's like a healing part of our day, you know, where we can, um, you know, look forward to that, that yoga day of the week and, and get to talk about what's going on in our lives. And sometimes we end up helping each other out and sometimes and then we get to get our workout and I go home and I, I feel better I feel better from it and it's been a, a balance that I, I wasn't getting before yeah so you know Dan was here cadre Dan he has his big event coming up brag heavy and um you know he's he's become a really good friend 10 years later I mean he's the kind of guy that showed up for a class 17 in Raleigh and was like I just I need some pain in my life right now he was he was in a school he was you know you know, there, there are some Green Bay schools that are more gentlemen's schools than, than, uh, <laughs> just, just the cool kid bag dump schools. And he was in one of those and showed up and we become friends ever since he was in our garage doing yoga and, and all that stuff. Right. I mean, and I also talked to him about the seek pain thing. He's like, yes, love it. Right. I mean, point is the SF culture gets it inherently. Like this is just the way of life and it's a little edgy. You're like, good. That, that's what I want to be. I want to, I want to do this kind of stuff. Now it can also border on, it's a, it's a fine line between hard and stupid. And so, but there know, is a line, there is a line. And if you use common sense, you can figure out where it is. And if you consistently push though, you're going to cross it from time to time. And to me, the point is, is that that is a lot better than always being so damn scared of that line. Right. Every time you start to sweat a little bit or your heart starts to beat just a little too much, you say, oh, I better back off, you know? And no, actually, you don't need to back off. Actually, you need to push really hard right now. And that's missing in the world, in too many places in the world, especially in, in our country where it's, it's so easy to make things easy, right? And, and there's no meaning. There's no purpose. You're just sort of dead inside. But, but this is not, we're not talking like, musculoskeletal, skeletal, you know, we're talking about the fair weather sort of athletes. I, you know, I've, I've become one. I used to run in snow and sleet and hail and, you know, cold weather. And now I'm like, oh, just wait. But, you know, when you are accountable to someone and someone else, uh, even outside of yourself, you know, because I think there's very few of us and, and that's not me included that are disciplined enough to go out in the inclement weather and, and really, you know, get your miles in, Uh, you know, I, I will do it if I know that my buddy's waiting for me at the corner, (laughs) you know, I will wake up, 
you know, at an ungodly hour and go in, in bad weather to go meet them because I know I don't want to let them down, right? If it's me, it's just me, I, I, I probably won't do it. You know, at this stage in my life, I've like, oh, been there, done that, don't want to, don't want to go through that. But we, we need some of that in our life, you know, and we need, because that is going to harden us and keep us hardened in a good way if and when, you know, disaster strikes and, and we're not able to, you know, fend for ourselves and you can't get back to the comfort of your car or your, or your home, you know, you're stranded somewhere. You know, I always think about like that worst case scenario mindset as well, right? From the SF world, but it's, you know, it's in other, other worlds as well. You know, what's going to happen if, if I, I can't get there? What am I going to do? Right? You're, you're not only responsible to yourself, but you're also responsible to the tribe. Mm-hmm. And, that, and you have to keep pushing yourself to ensure that you're at that level or above that level. Keep pushing through because too many people today, they're looking for good enough. And good enough isn't good enough yeah. for the tribe. You've got to be at your best, whatever you're capable of. Now, we're all going to be at different levels but you still bring something to the tribe, to the group. And that is inherent to you as an individual as that responsibility to the tribe occurs. I had a moment at the Bragg Heavy event a couple years ago. It was the one that got canceled. That We were doing this really hard workout in the, in the first eight hours of the event. And it, w- it includes sort of like you had to drag another person. You know, there was like a body drag. and I have to tell you that I couldn't do it. Like I was more like spent and winded, this exhausted than I I had ever been in in a long time in a, in a workout, like not like, not not like a running workout or a rucking workout endurance stuff. It was like just sheer moving mass, you know, moving a person. And it bothered me for a while because I was thinking, wow, if I combine the weights of all my children we're getting close to, you know, what that, what I couldn't move. And what if there was a situation where I had to get them all out of a burning house or had to carry them all, you know, by myself or something for a while. And I, I decided like enough is enough. Like I need to start, you know, doing some workouts that involve, you know, weight bearing and, and doing the sandbag, you know, get, get used to a sandbag and, and sort of the stuff a little bit more and not just do the, you know, just do the rucking just for endurance. And it, it changed. It changed something for me. Yeah. I mean, look, we get comfortable doing what we're comfortable doing and and you can only push so far in that. I mean, you, you, you ran in college, you kept running. It's, it's comes naturally to you, right? I mean, I, I rucked in the army. It's comes pretty naturally to me. And it's kind of like, then you look down and you see that, that awesome setup of sandbags. They go from, you know, the, the lightweight to the really, really F you weight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, look, you can scale up to, to any level. You have to learn your own body though. So in this, like literally seek pain is a way of life. This, this does not mean go figure out a way to hurt yourself and brag about it. I'll give you another cadre tip from cadre bill who will be at brag heavy. It's a lesson I, I just, he taught it at a challenge and it's really stuck with me. It's like, look, and th- there's this bravado about getting hurt and pushing yourself so hard and bragging about it out there. Right. He goes, well, in special forces, you don't have that luxury because if you're, you're part of the team and you get hurt, then someone else has to either carry you. They have to fight for you. They have to defend you. They have to save you. Wh- whatever happens, you're, you're putting the team at greater risk. Somebody's going to have to do your job. When you go down, somebody else has got to pick up what exactly. you were going to do. Exactly. So if you decide you're going to overtrain, if you decide, you know, I'm not talking about combat specifically, but if you decide that you're going to squat a million pounds and throw your back out and you can't go on the deployment, they don't just fill in another green beret. You just don't go. And so that becomes a problem that, that hurts the team. So part of this is warrior poet stuff. You have to get smart about this and not just not just from reading books, but from pushing, push yourself, learn, learn the difference between the type of, Hey, this really sucks, but I need to, I need to do two more reps without breaking form. We're more interested in doing correct form, not injuring yourself and pushing really hard because the push comes from your head. 
the, and, and your muscles just happen to benefit from that. And this is, this is how we want to live our lives. It's how we want to push others to, to live theirs. And, and the form part is, is that's where your tribe comes in too, right? Because if you are doing all these things by yourself, you might not be doing it right. You know, having someone, you know, maybe it's someone who has a background in this, you know, like the, when I started doing the yoga in person again outside, you know, I found that I was doing some poses wrong, you know, and I, you know, I got better at doing it the right way and my form improved and so did the benefits, you know, so, and, and so did the chance of me, you know, hurting myself or straining or, or something like that. So, you know, even sometimes having a buddy to be like, hey, does this look right? You know, am I, when I, when I do this, you know, ruck, you know, high pull, am I, is my back straight? You know, you can, or how's my squat form? You know, I mean, you know, or you can go, if you really need to like go and see, you know, the expert and say, have them help you evaluate those sort of things. I mean, that's, that's all available to you. And that's, that's what this is about. You know, if you can, if you're doing it alone all the time, you probably, you know, you need to seek someone out to, 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 to join you every once in a while. I mean, I, I've learned from some people, DS among them, about form this and form that on a lot of these movements that I didn't do a lot of previously. You know, now there's more people that show up. It's kind of like Fight Club in my driveway sometimes, right? And, you know, they're new to to some of the movements. And it's it's like, it's not, nobody cares how much weight you have. Right. Nobody cares at 6.30 on Friday mornings out in front of Scars. Rich and I are always there. Nobody cares how much weight you have. We We just don't care. It's like, if you show up and you do the work and then we drink some coffee and shoot the shit a little bit when we're done and it's great. That's, that's the best part of being on a team as well. You do hard stuff together and hard stuff is painful. That's the thing. It's painful. Sometimes it's hard on your ego too, right? Because oh, yeah. if all you want to do is do the one workout that you're good at every time there's other people around what well, what's going to happen when life throws you a curveball and that's not the workout that it's going to test you on in your life, right? And so you got to get out of your your ego as well. And then once you're in the the moment doing whatever else, I mean eat some humble pie. I mean I had my buddy who's uh, always shows up on the, on our drive our kids play together and stuff. You know, he is really good in in terms of if if he's got like a 10 by, I, I told him he'd be a really strong prison inmate, you know, <laughs> like if, if there were just a prison <laughs> cell and he could just have his weights and stuff or whatever there, he'd be real resourceful. He's like, I mean, he just houses everything. The workouts are just always done. Now I like to add a, a movement of some distance call, you know, like it's what we do here. Stop sign and back stuff like that. Like l- let the muscles recover a little bit. Anyway, long story short is Sometimes we, we do stuff and we just stay in place for pretty much the whole workout and I just get my ass beat. Right. And then sometimes we do longer movements and it's, it's a different story. The point is the, the team, the tribe makes everyone stronger. You learn from, from finding new things that are painful. And so when I say seek pain, this is, this is not some masochistic for its own sake type of thing. It's like, I want to get your attention. Like, this is really important to your life. There's a lot of pain out there. Life is full of pain. All the best things, all the best lessons in life, they come from pain. They don't come from being dead inside, watching TV, soaking your soul into some screen somewhere where it's like you look back and you say, man, I I watched a lot of TV. That sucks, right? What, What you want is, man, I did this thing. It was really hard. It kicked my ass. You know, I sought pain, right? I mean, it's just like, start to start to bow your chest out just a little bit, right? Stand up a little bit taller, put your shoulders back and like realize there's so much more that you can do. If you just say, I'm going to go get after it. And that is a very rewarding life when you combine that with the tribal mentality. Yeah. Any other big thoughts, Rich? Rich, what's the most painful thing that you sought out? Let's not talk about your marriages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't talk about that. That that was kind of the first thing that came to mind, but probably the 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 preparation phase that I went through for some of the selections I went to, uh, because I was really pushing myself, and and again I had to be very careful because I had a start date, 
and I knew when I had to go to that, and I knew I needed to prepare myself prior to going, but not hurt myself or put myself in a situation where I was going to be so beat down at the start that I couldn't properly function. That's where I learned from a lot of people around me, mentors that were there that, that helped me through the tribe, that helped me prepare myself in multiple ways, carrying heavier weights, longer distances, lots of rucking, probably not as much weight work per se, but, but some, certainly. We, we didn't use sandbags back then, other than to, to put around bunkers in, in war zones and stuff. But right towards the end of every preparation phase, when I was kind of hurting, and I, but I was pushing myself farther and farther each time, again, ensuring that I didn't hurt myself. Because seeking pain isn't about hurting yourself. Yeah, you're going to be sore, and you're going to be stretched. And, and, and if I'd known about yoga then, it would have been very helpful. I found, about, found out about yoga later on in life, and it, it really made a difference for me. But those preparation phases were probably the, the hardest things. And that was, again, a lot of, of distance, heavy rucking. I mean, in full context is those are preparation. That's preparation for selections of whatever kind to, to join a unit that's going to take more risk and, you know, go. I mean, it it's, becomes more tribal. Oh yeah. It, you know, the more, yeah. the more that you keep passing the, yeah. the more kind of, you just been through more. So the more tribal it is. Right. And so it's like, you have to push yourself, you have to challenge yourself. And that's, that's the way of life that we, we extol. What about you? I mean, joining up after nine 11 was, I mean, that was a very difficult, painful thing to do. I mean, the, the mental side of it, Enlisting in a time of war is something that you have to kind of go through to, to know what that exactly feels like. And then, you know, the build up to that was you're just living in a, a fear of sorts that you won't make the grade. And so it's very challenging. It, it, was, it was also very motivating. Those cadres are very wise. It's very motivating because you find the kind of person who says, I will pour everything I have into this because I don't want to fail. And so that's basically what I did. And at, at that point, you know, like let the chips fall where they may because you've given it your all. And if you leave it all out there, then, you know, the world has its verdicts and they are what they are. And, and what you just explained is very tribal. It's entering the tribe, becoming a part of the tribe. And that's, that's a big motivator. The idea that you're, that you're not going to live up to the reputation that you perceive of the tribe that you're joining, that's a super motivator. Always has been for me. We don't have that anymore in society. It's not really a thing. Right. Right. Like, hey, you need to join this tribe. You need to pass this test. Doesn't exist. I mean, what, college, high school? I mean, come on. There's not enough of this. Everybody gets a trophy. Maybe we need to, maybe we need to figure out some, some tests, some bigger tests along the way. Well, I, I mean, I think that's, the case is that you find a lot of these sort of even physical fitness tests that we grew up with in the in the past they've they've been sort of taken out of the mix you know and and i i think that's that's not a good thing you know i mean we need to be you go through these selection processes even if it's just a just to see where you're at just like a baseline i mean we've read our, the articles and and read and seen about how the military, the generals are coming on and saying the average, you know, soldier is not fit enough for war. These are actual problems that they're talking about. And, you know, I think that can also be said, you know, kind of broader speaking. And but but not everybody's going to war. Not everyone's going to be in the same sort of tribe as, as special forces or, or beyond that. But, you know, how does how does the average person stay motivated? You know, what? What is it that's missing today? And I mean, I'm asking the question, but I also I also just think that it's it's the accountability of that neighbor. You know, it's as simple. It's the accountability of the tribe. It, yes, and, and and what is your tribe? It's it doesn't have to be a bunch of SF guys. You know, no, not it, at it all. can be your you know your girlfriends or your your the guys that get together. It could be your rock club. It could your be your family. Your family. I mean. 
there's there's all these different ways to do it. And I think that's what we're trying to broaden here is to say, you not everybody wants to do what you've done, Rich, and what you've done, Jason, you know, that, but they want to, they do want to strive for something that's similar, right? And that's going to hold them to a standard, right? And so who's going to hold you to the best standard? The people that know you. Sure. Right? Yeah. They'll push you a little bit more too. Which oh, yeah. Is, which is great. Yeah. Because they, they know your strengths and weaknesses, sometimes even better than you do. Mm-hmm. All right. So quick roundup on, on Go Ruck Tribe. There's a couple more folks who are in, involved that are not on this call right now, but Cadre DS is doing a lot of the, the programming on the sandbag, sandbag rucksack training, the SRT side. So that's kind of a, an additional layer to this is if, if you want to do more of that stuff where, where you are, you can do it in your garage, you can do it in a, in a park, you can do it anywhere. Um, there's, there's that programming also available. Also, Roger Sparks, who you'll hear a lot more about in the coming weeks and, and months. He's actually making the trek down here late January from Alaska. He's a tattoo artist in Eagle River, Alaska, which I, I got to pick a, a little fight with him because I got this impression that he was out in the boonies or whatever in, in Alaska, you know, living a real frontiersman life. I, th- I thought he was hard, right? And comes to find out he's right next to Anchorage. You know, he's, he's like a city slicker up there, right? Practically. You're like, no. Those <laughs> cities aren't the same as ours. Jason. No, it's not even the case. <laughs> it's not even remotely the case. He's a, he's a pararescue man up in Alaska, a, a PJ Silver Star recipient. Before that, he was a, a force reconnaissance Marine. Um, just has an incredible story. Become pretty, pretty close with him pretty fast fast order. He's doing the graphics for Go Ruck Tribe this year. And he just has awesome. I I just got some goosebumps thinking about some of his story that's in his book, which is going to be what we read in February, a a warrior's creed. So if you hear this, you might want to get it because I have a feeling Amazon's going to get back ordered on this one too. (laughs) But so he's doing all the graphics and a lot of inspiration as well. So we'll have him on the podcast. We'll have Sebastian Younger on the podcast later this year. Um, you know, he wrote the book Tribe, which is a, a great and relevant and, and timely book about state of society and just how we can live a little bit better. I mean, he he also, by the way, lives in New York City and, you know, was a journalist, not a not a soldier and and was uh, involved with Restrepo, which is one of the best films or documentaries I've ever seen. You know, be excited to have him on Glorious Professionals for sure, regardless of this. But it's it's really cool with Tribe. And really the the overarching thing here though, is this is not meant to be just us to you. That's not how this works. Community building, that's not how it works either. It's us to you and then you to your tribes. That's where the reward will come. I mean, we're grateful to be part of this community in a, in a virtual sense, but we are, our kind of cups get filled up in, when we go to events, when we travel around to, to see how the rut clubs are doing wherever they are on in, in the country and in the, in the world. And, and so what we want to do is we want to kind of see how far you all can take your tribes, how to push them a little bit more and get them more involved. That, that, that has nothing to do necessarily with them signing up to, to earn the patch every month. If that happens, awesome. But what we want is for there to be stronger communities, stronger tribes throughout our, our country. This is the way of life that we believe in. It's, it's, what we're, it's what we're all about. More than any other facet of GORUCK, it's this way of life that it's not about us. We, we look forward to the opportunity to, to, to act selflessly around those that we love, and, and we're fortunate to have those people around. To, to bring diverse groups of people together is, is what it's all about and form them into a tribe to do things together. People that are like-minded. It doesn't mean that they, that they agree on everything in the world. I could care less what anybody's political views are, or, but communities are important. Tribes are important. And that's what we want to get people back to and thinking about and participating in. No, I was just thinking that the taskings, the workouts, the book, the patch, they don't breathe life into it on their own. You know, it's, it's really, you, you get it, you get out of it, what you put into it. And, you know, just as an aside, you know, thinking about 
the the group of um, badass babes through GORUCK, we were kind of chatting and some of them were saying, you know, I kind of want to talk about this, but I want to talk about it amongst you guys, with you, with you all, you know, with, with this tribe. So in addition to the sort of top down discussion on, on the book later this month, we've, we've scheduled for the next day um, to have that discussion amongst ourselves. So it'll be a little bit different, but we're going to do it our way and have a little happy hour and it will have to be over Zoom since we can't all get together. But the the purpose is to talk and and hear what we have to say. And I and I know that that will probably go back in other parts of our lives. All right. Since this is some warrior poet stuff that we're about, I'll, I'll leave you with a, a quote from Marcus Aurelius. Pain is neither unbearable nor unending, as long as you keep in mind its limits and don't magnify them in your imagination. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome to the tribe, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next one.